Welcome back. Our national lead now, Customs and Border Protection, speeding up the deployment of 750 officers to the southern border as the humanitarian crisis there worsens from a flood of undocumented migrants, many of them families seeking asylum, overburdening a system already stretched thin. This comes as President Trump is renewing his threat to close the U.S.-Mexico border this week unless the Mexican government does more to stop the flow. Ed Lavendera is at the U.S.-Mexico border in El Paso, Texas. Ed, are officials there preparing for the border to be closed, and how would that even work exactly? Well, that's what many people around here want to know. It would essentially, you know, this is the, uh, the, the welcome sign that you get once you cross the bridge from Juarez, Mexico, into El Paso. This is the port of entry you see behind me. You take this road, and a lot of people walk back this way in, into Mexico. They drive back and forth. This is used over and over throughout the day. So the idea of closing all of this down would have a devastating effect. If you look back here onto the, the main street that takes you into El Paso, hundreds of businesses that depend on that foot traffic coming back and forth. That's just one small piece of the economic puzzle that would be impacted by the closure of the border here, Jake. And that's why the news of this has really sent shockwaves up and down the southern border. Ed, you've been to the border countless times. What are you seeing on the ground there over the last day or so? Well, you know, we've heard so much over the last couple of weeks from Customs and Border Protection, federal government officials talking about the, the increase and how the number of migrants arriving at the southern border is uh, straining the system. You know, throughout much of El Paso, uh, there is border wall that already exists through here. What we saw here in the last couple of days is, uh, for example, we witnessed one group of about 50 migrants right in front of the, the border wall that were being processed by Border Patrol agents. Uh, so there's this, so people understand this no man's land between the river which is the actual border and the border wall that exists. And many of those migrants simply getting up to the southern side of that border wall, and that gets them into the United States. And that's why you see those Border Patrol agents processing those large numbers of people here, even though there's a border wall in place. Jake? All right, Ed Levandera at the border in El Paso. Thanks so much. When asked whether the president will close the border, a White House official told CNN, quote, you never know. It's anybody's guess. While acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney told me in State of the Union, the president will indeed cut off aid to El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras, also known as the Northern Triangle, because the countries could, quote, do more to stem the tide of migrants from their countries, despite the fact that experts and top officials within Mr. Trump's own administration say that cutting off that foreign aid will only cause more migrants to flee to the United States. CNN's Abby Phillip is at the White House now. Abby, is the White House preparing for the president to close the border? Well, Jake, they're preparing for anything at this point, but officials are telling us that it's not clear that the president has gotten to the point where he's ready to make a decision on this. One official telling me that it doesn't appear that something is imminent as of this moment and that key parts of this decision haven't been made. Like, for example, what would be a, the scope of such a closure if one were to happen? Uh, but there's also something else the White House is considering. According to my colleague uh, Jeremy Diamond, officials have been, uh, have been throwing around the idea recently of appointing some kind of immigration czar. The the idea being to have one person focus on dealing with the, the issue of people crossing the border illegally and this surge that we've seen in recent weeks and months at the border. You, this is happening at the same time that the Department of Homeland Security is saying that there is a crisis and the crisis is getting worse by the day. There are some names being kicked around, including Chris Kobach, uh, the uh, Kentucky Secretary of State, and also uh, Ken Cuccinelli, the former uh, official in the state of Virginia, and also CNN political commentator as well. Jake. I've heard a lot of Republicans, Abby, talking about how they think cutting, sh shutting down the southern border would be a horrible idea because it would be a self-inflicted wound on the United States' own economy. What type of economic impact would a border closure have? And, uh, Jake, that argument is also being made within the White House. Officials briefing the president over a period of months about these economic impacts. And let me just show you a little bit of what we're talking about here. Mexico is the second largest trading partner for the United States at, as of this moment. And 78 percent, almost 80 percent of U.S. exports go to Mexico by truck or rail. So we're talking over that southern border. Mexico also accounted for almost half of the agricultural produce that comes across the border. And that's not even talking about about the, the flow of people, people who work in, in the United States or work in Mexico and vice versa. But in the face of all of that, this is what Mick Mulvaney told you yesterday on State of the Union. Are you concerned at all about closing the border given the effect it will have on the American economy? 
Sure, but we're also concerned about the effect of the American economy and the nation as a whole from having 100,000, more than 100,000 people cross illegally uh, this month. So this is the argument that Mulvaney is making to the president, and the president also believes that closing the border is a unilateral action he can take to do something about this issue at the border. It also, in the president's view, is something that will put some pressure on Mexico to do more to stop people from getting over into the United States, Jake. All right, Abby Phillip at the White House, thanks so much. Uh, let's talk about this with our experts. Ayesha, obviously there is a humanitarian crisis at the border, especially with all these families coming and seeking asylum and overburdening a system that can't take them. But shutting down the border, closing off legal immigration, closing off uh, all the uh, economic uh, interactions going on. Does that make sense? Might it work? Well, what it seems like President Trump is trying to do is say he's going to do something to stop this flow uh, across the border because this is what he ran on, right? He ran on being able to get illegal immigration under control. And now you have Im illegal immigration at record levels under his watch. And so that's a huge thing for him to try to address. But if you try to shut down the border, yes, you may get Mexico to act, but you're going to get some Americans to act too because you're going to affect Americans. It doesn't, if, if you're trying to do something political, politically to make a point, but you hurt your own citizens, that's going to be an issue. And you saw this with the shutdown, where he tried to take this very kind of staunch point of view, I'm going, I'm going to get my wall. But then when you started to see the repercussions of it, he ultimately had to give in. Uh, uh, Jamal, take a listen to what Acting Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney told me yesterday. Mexico could help us do it. They need to do a little bit more. Honduras could do more. Nicaragua do, could do more. El Salvador could do more. And if we're going to give these countries hundreds of millions of dollars, we would like them to do more. That, uh, Jake, I would respectfully submit to you, is not an unreasonable position. Um, we could prevent a lot of what's happening on the southern border by preventing people from moving into Mexico in the first place. I think he meant Honduras, not Nicaragua. But the larger point, if you cut off aid to these countries, people in the president's own administration in, in CBP and Homeland Security, they say the aid to these South American countries, Central American countries, uh, has reduced the homicide rate uh, in many instances. It has stemmed the flow uh, of undocumented immigrants. Uh, it seems self-defeating. It just often seems like the president doesn't really understand how these things work. Um, the same questions come up when he deals with NATO, this question about giving aid to these countries um, in the South and about how that will help stem the tide of immigration. I think about the point you were just making with Aisha, talking about trade. You know, I'm from Michigan. So many auto companies are now sourcing their parts from south of the border. Right. And when people can't get parts for their cars and the prices go up and cars aren't available, that's going to hurt the American economy. And the economy seems to be the only thing that is holding this president up in terms of any of his um, poll numbers. So I just think this is cutting off his face despite his nose. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, Scott, uh, th let's look at the State Department data I was just referencing. This is homicides per capita in El Salvador, cut in half from 2015 to 2018. And officials in the Trump administration, DHS, CBP, uh, State Department, say that aid, uh, and then this commission, the Customs and Border Patrol Commissioner Kevin uh, McAleen that last month just said this, that aid helped the officials in Central America make it less violent in those countries. And for instance, in El Salvador, that meant fewer people fleeing to the United States. Yeah, I've uh, worked in this space uh, over the past several years. I've uh, experienced firsthand uh, USAID products out in the field in various places. And I believe in American foreign aid. I believe it works. And I believe in this case, based on the data, it is working. So I don't agree with the president that cutting off aid here is the right answer. However, I do agree with the president that we do need more aggressive tactics from these countries to help us get this crisis under control. Look at the numbers, the thousands of people who are coming across the border. And so the president is trying to come up with things. I think some may be good, some may be not so good to stop what many, many Americans and certainly the vast majority of his supporters believe is an absolute crisis. You have people coming here for good reasons, mm -hmm. fleeing violence, but you also have people coming here absolutely for the wrong reasons. And the president's trying to find a way to do something about it and I hope he ends up finding the right levers to pull it off.